Hello everyone, this is Mumbo and welcome back to another Minecraft video and in this one we're going to be doing something that is incredibly well requested down in the comment section. Every single one of my videos has at least one of these comments down there. People ask me, what is the best way to hide away my base? So in today's video, we're going to be taking a look at a bunch of different techniques and a whole ton of different redstone contraptions. Now, this video is going to be organized in a very simple pattern. We're going to have three different categories. We're going to have the simple category, we're going to have the hidden inputs category, and then we're going to have the slightly more complicated category. All of those will be on the screen right now, and there'll be time jumps down in the description to allow you to get to certain sections of the video quickly. But now, let's crack on. Design number one is the 2x1 flash piston door. Now, you guys have probably already seen this about a billion times on YouTube already, so I won't spend too much time on it. But as you can see, three bits of redstone dust and a repeater set to two ticks, as well as a bunch of sticky pistons, and you have got yourself a working system. Now, this thing is completely flush with the wall, meaning that if you were to build this and this out of the same blocks, you wouldn't be able to tell there was a piston door there. So that is a massive positive. The only slight negative is, it's, it's not the most fancy thing in the world. Now this little fella right here is pretty similar to the first design but it works on a horizontal plane as opposed to a vertical one. So if we flick this lever you can see our block is retracted then it is moved out the way meaning that we have ourselves a completely hidden away trapdoor. Now the positives and negatives are fairly similar. Once again if this was just made out of all the same blocks you would have absolutely no clue that this thing was here but the negative is still not particularly fancy. I've had to construct a bit of a diving board for this one, but if we drop down, we'll travel through the lava into the water and then fall out the bottom. I mean, how fantastic is that? Now, there are some very, very obvious positives to this one. Number one is the fact that there is no redstone whatsoever. It's an incredibly simple design. And also, you do feel like a superhero doing it. I mean, jumping into lava is something that you would never normally do in Minecraft. So it feels quite cool doing it, but there are also a handful of negatives. Now one is that it does cause damage, and number two is that it does destroy your armor quite quickly. But, superhero, I mean, come on! This thing right here is one of my favorite redstone contraptions in the history of mankind, simply because back in the day, these were called hipster doors, and they were huge. They involved so much redstone, and now, thanks to slime blocks, we can just do that. <laughs> there we go. The blocks have dropped down into the floor. It has a really cool opening sequence and also it's very, very simple to build involving just three pieces of redstone dust, two repeaters and then our two sticky pistons right there as well as a bunch of slime blocks. Which brings me on to the positives and negatives. Positives looks awesome and is also incredibly simple to build. Negatives, you do need a whole bunch of slime balls to build it which means you're probably going to need some form of slime farm. Bummer. Say hello to the oldest trick in the book. The old painting with nothing behind it trick. I mean, we've seen this in like Scooby-Doo and everything like that over the years. And of course, it also works in Minecraft. And the massive positive is, it's really, really simple. But the massive, massive negative is, every man and his dog knows about this thing. And that means that if a player does come into your base and they're trying to find your items, they're probably going to try out the random painting that you have on the wall. And finally, arguably one of the easiest to build designs in this group. Yeah, you can you can just you can just place blocks and then have your base behind it and then break those blocks to get into your base. Huge positive is here. Really no funny business going on. I mean, you don't have to worry about redstone contraptions or anything. You don't have to do any thinking. Negative is, is that you do look like a bit of an oaf. So there we go. Those are our six different super simple designs. All of them are incredibly simple. So much so that I think this is probably a good enough tutorial. I mean, you can see all of the redstone timings there. You can see those redstone timings right there. And that's about it. Really not too much redstone going on in this department. So let's move on into the inputs. Input number one is something that you've probably seen on my channel a number of times as well. And that is the redstone torch key. Idea being, you place down a redstone torch that extends out a piston, which then extends another piston, which breaks the redstone torch, which means that you can use it again, but also it means that you get yourself a redstone output, which you can run into some form of hidden door. Now, massive positive of this one is, look how simple that is. I mean, you can see all of the redstone right there. The negative is, though, you have to carry around one of these little fellas if you want to get into your base. If you don't have one of these on you, then you're going to have to break into your own base and, well, nobody likes doing that. This next design has all of the positives and negatives of this design, but it's slightly different. This is known as the hose switch, and of course, it's incredibly simple. I mean, take a look at this thing. Really, really easy to build, 
but unfortunately you do have to carry a hoe with you wherever you go to be able to get into your base. Now the way that this one works is we actually power the underside of the farmland and when you till it and turn it into farmland, that actually turns this dirt into a transparent block, which means that we no longer get a redstone output through this redstone, which means that our piston extends, which then breaks the farmland and resets the entire thing. But of course, in the process, we get ourselves a redstone output, which we can run into some form of hidden entrance. For the third time in a row, we have got exactly the same positives and negatives. Yes, this one does require that you have a very specific item in your inventory, but it works slightly differently in that you throw it onto the floor, it then gets picked up by this hopper minecart which travels through this item filter and ends up in this chest down at the bottom here. Now the redstone for this one is once again really really compact. We do have a handful of expensive materials though, so that might be something to take into consideration. This design right here is probably the simplest design of the bunch. We've got a stone block and then if you really look closely, a little button on it. Now I must admit, in this sort of situation right here, the button is visible. For example, if you're walking in this direction, obviously you can really clearly see that. But if you look at it from this direction, then it's harder to spot. And if you're far away, then you really are going to struggle to see this thing. But one good way that you can hide the stone button is to actually increase the quantity of stone around it so then it blends in even more. And another top tip is to place some long grass or bone meal in front of it then nobody is going to be finding this thing. The only negative is, is that people could potentially find this thing and get access into your base. I mean, come on, you're seriously telling me that someone's gonna be able to see that? You would have to have eyes the size of Jupiter to be able to spot that button back there. I placed the button and I'm struggling to find it. This little thing is known as the item frame position key. At least, that's what I'm calling it. And I redesigned it recently in my most secure piston door video. All you have to do is put the item frame in the correct position and then you will get yourself a redstone output. Now the reason that this is cool is that you could have an item frame above all of your chests and everything like that in your storage system, but one of them, a specific one of them, could be used to open a hidden part of your base. Positives are is that it's quite simple to use Negatives are is that you do need a storage system with a bunch of item frames for this little fella to fit in. So that right there should be enough hidden inputs for all of your hidden entrances. However, I understand that some of you guys want crazy different bits and pieces, so I'll put links to those down in the description. Speaking of crazy bits and pieces, how about we take a look at the crazy complicated designs I've recently come up with. Now because these designs are so complicated, I'm going to showcase all of them first, go right the way down the line, and then at the end of the video, I'm going to go through the tutorial so you guys don't get too bored watching me just do all of this redstone right here. So the first design that we're going to take a look at is this old gem of a concept from way back in the early days of my YouTube channel. This is known as the Hidden Tree Entrance, and I have done a lot of redesigning today, and I have come up with this incredibly small design. I mean, this thing, this is tiny. This is seriously, seriously compact. And if we flick this lever, you can see that this block drops down and also these blocks drop down, allowing us to drop through the center. Now I have to say, a simple trap door could probably work just as well as this, but there's something quite cool about dropping through the bottom of a tree. So the positives are, this thing is awesome and looks amazing. The negatives are, obviously quite a bit of redstone work to do. In the early days of flush piston door designing, the 3x3 flush piston door was about as complicated as it got. I mean, seriously, these contraptions were huge. They involved tons upon tons of redstone, and they were just incredibly complicated to construct. Nowadays, we have slime blocks, and we can make things quite a lot simpler. As you just saw right there, this thing opens up really nice and quickly, and it also has an awesome opening and closing sequence. Now I have to say I'm quite proud of this design because not only is it really, really compact, but also you may notice that this is 12 blocks. We've got six slime blocks and we've got six regular blocks, which means that this bottom piston can't actually extend in this set right here because obviously we've got the 12 blocks there and that is the 13th block to push up, which means that we've had to do something fairly interesting. If you watch, the piston extends first, just pushing out those blocks then it retracts, allowing this piston to push it upwards, and then it extends as a standard double piston extender. It's just a cool little workaround for that little issue. Oh yeah, positives and negatives, that's the thing that we're doing. Uh, positives looks really cool, negatives, obviously it uses a lot of redstone. In fact, I think those positives and negatives probably go for most of the designs in this section right here. 
Once again, this is an old gem of a concept from the early days of my YouTube channel that I've sort of remastered and redesigned in the latest Minecraft update to create something tiny. This thing is just three blocks wide and it's just four blocks long. And if you flick this lever right here, you can see that our little decorative pillar drops down at revealing a hidden entrance right there. Now this is known as the secret pillar door. And if we flick this lever, you can see that all of the blocks return. I mean, it's a simple concept. It's an incredibly simple concept, but it's something that I personally quite like. So obviously the positives are, once again, as per usual, this thing looks awesome. The negative is, is that of course, you do need to have pillars in your base. Not many people really tend to have big pillars like this in their bases, but if you do, then this is the perfect design for you. Now I know what you're thinking. This doesn't look particularly hidden. This looks like a completely standard piston door, and if you hit this button, you can see that it operates as a completely standard piston door. It seems very strange, and it doesn't seem to fit in with the video, and most importantly, it seems to be a very big design for a standard piston door. But the idea is, is you have another input. Now this one would be hidden away, perhaps it could use some of the input devices that we've taken a look at in today's video. If you hit that button, and that opens up the pistons down at the bottom as well. Now what that means is, is that you can open up your piston door, and also drop through the bottom of it, going down into a new part of your base. Hiding in plain sight. And finally, we have gone into a completely different world right here. This one looks a lot less voidy and a lot more Minecrafty because we are going to take a look at one of my favorite redstone videos I ever did. Now, I have no clue when I uploaded this, but I think it was when slime blocks were first introduced into the game, so quite a long time ago, and it's called the Slime Bump Secret Entrance. It's as simple as that. <laughs> All you have to do is you place a slime block down in the floor at the bottom of a cliff and then you walk up to the edge of the cliff, you walk off the edge of the cliff and then you hold W and move backwards into your base. <laughs> it's as simple as that and it's awesome. I absolutely love this thing. Feels like something out of Assassin's Creed. The only negative is, is that of course you do have an exposed slime block which if people put two and two together, they see the slime block, then they see that area right there, they might be able to locate your hidden entrance. But still, this thing's amazing. And that, my friends, is that. Those are all of the designs that I have for you guys in today's video. So now let's crack on, and I'll show you how to build this design, this design, this design, and this design. For our hidden tree entrance, the first thing we want to do is create a 5x5 five five area. Then you want to place a double piston extender right there with three sticky pistons facing across and a sticky piston facing upwards right there. So that one right there is going to be dropping the floor down and this one is going to be retracting all of the tree blocks and then this is going to be moving all of those tree blocks across allowing us to drop down into the bottom. So now what you want to do is place in a block just up like this which is going to be your input. And we're going to have a repeater running across just like that with some slabs going in this direction and then some blocks and then a block up like this and a block down at the bottom there with some redstone dust. Then we're going to have redstone and we're going to have comparators facing in each direction like that with another slab right there and redstone dust. Next up, we're going to go underneath this block right here and place a sticky piston with a redstone block on its face. Then we're going to fill in this entire area with blocks, with a block up just like that. Then we want redstone dust out the back. We want four ticks and then three ticks on both of those repeaters with redstone dust right there. And then we want four ticks right here and one tick on that repeater right there, which is going to do a decent quantity of our double piston extender circuit. Then we just want to place some redstone dust up like this and a block like that, which is going to do the top extension. Finally, onto the slightly strange bit. This is going to be the final block retraction and it involves a whole ton of observers. Now I've had to do this to keep things nice and compact. We're going to have two observers facing in that direction, with the block right there, then a regular piston facing upwards, another observer facing in this direction with a block on its face. Now, if we place a lever on this block, we should see that we will get the full extension and also the full retraction as well. Fantastic, that thing is now working. Now for this one, you wanna get things started with a five by four area. And the first thing we're going to do is chuck in a double piston extender, just a little bit like that. And then we're going to add in the pulse extender around the bottom. So we're going to have a repeater set to four ticks and a repeater set to three ticks with a block up like this, a block right there, and then redstone dust on top of both of those. Now this block right here is going to be your input and that's going to be extending out all of the pistons down at the bottom. And then we're going to have an observer facing in this direction which is what is going to be firing up the blocks. So you know at the beginning, it shoots the blocks upwards, 
that's what that observer is there for. So then you just want to place in a two by three area of slime blocks and that's where your door blocks are going to be going. For the final parts of the bottom circuit, we're going to have a block up like this, a repeater set to four ticks once again, running into this immovable object right here. And then on the side of this block, we're going to place in a redstone torch, which is going to be running out into our dropper that's going to be facing upwards. We're going to take a comparator output from that one right there. And that is going to be running across into this block right here, which is going to be the final block retraction. So now we just have to place any old item on the inside of this dropper and we can give this thing a tester. So when we flick the lever, we should see that we get the full extension. All of our slime blocks have been pushed upwards and then hopefully we have got ourselves the full retraction. Now it's time to do the top circuit. So as you can see over here, the way that we connect them up is using a little redstone torch tower. So we're going to take a redstone torch output from the side of this block right here, and that is going to travel upwards like this, and we're going to go all the way up to this point right here. Now up at the top, we're going to create a pulse extender. So we've got two bits of redstone there, then we have a comparator facing in this direction, and a comparator facing in that direction, and then we're going to cover this entire area with redstone dust just like that. Now on the underside of this one, we're going to place in our six sticky pistons like this, and then we're going to have three sticky pistons facing across, and then that's where your door blocks are going to be going. And finally, you just wanna take a redstone output from this thing right here, we're going to run it out like this, and then have a repeater set to four ticks with redstone dust running across just like that. So that should mean that we now have ourselves a fully functional door. So I'm going to grab myself some door blocks, and we can give this thing a tester. But of course, as per usual, I've got something slightly wrong. We need to add in an extra regular piston facing downwards like this, which is going to update our pistons. And also we just want to set this one to two ticks, not four ticks. But anyway, let's try this. Give it a flick and we should see that there is the full extension. That thing is completely flush with the wall. And then we should see full retraction as well. So this thing is working absolutely perfectly. And we've got ourselves a fully functional three by three flush piston door. The pillar door is quite a lot simpler than the other ones. All we need to do is place in a couple blocks like this. Then we have redstone dust right there, and that block is going to be our input. We're going to have a block up like that, sticky piston facing upwards, two sticky pistons facing upwards, and that is where your two pillar blocks is going to be going. Then from this point forth, we want to place in a block up like this, a repeater set to two ticks, and that's going to be running up into this block right here with redstone dust on top, and that's going to be powering our top piston extender. And then underneath here, we just want to place a repeater, set it to four ticks. That's going to be going out into this block with redstone dust down at the bottom and then a block next to that sticky piston. Then for the falling edge monostable circuit, we just want to place in a redstone torch, a dropper facing in this direction, a hopper running back into it with an item on the inside of that hopper right there. And then we want to take a comparator output and that is going to be going into this block over here. So now if we replace these blocks with the appropriate blocks, we've got the stair at the front and then we have the actual pillar block, you can see that there is the pillar popping up and that allows us to have this completely hidden away. And then when we flick this lever, you can see all of our blocks drop down and we can pop through into our hidden entrance. Now this design is so simple that I don't actually think it requires a full block by block tutorial. All you have to do is make it so that one of the buttons just runs into our piston door. So for example, this button on the left, that just runs into the piston door, that opens up, and the piston door is a very simple two by two design. But then down underneath, you can see that we have these extra pistons, and then you need to make it so that this button or your other input runs both into the bottom pistons and also into the piston door, meaning that all of them open up. It's really very easy, and the way that you wire it up just depends on the situation that you have. Now, if you want to know how to build this design, all you have to do is go and check out the original video that I posted of it, probably around about two or three years ago now. Now, I was really happy when this thing came out because I think it got 100,000 views within the first week, which for me back then was absolutely incredible. It was one of the viral videos that I produced of the time. I haven't actually watched it back just yet though, but I will just apologize for how terrible the video is probably going to be. Anyway, I hope that you enjoyed this one. If you did, be sure to hit that like button. And if you really loved it, then make sure to subscribe. But thanks for watching, guys. This has been Mumbo, and I'm out. I'll see you later.